to the stable, uncertain of what we have heard and seen. Like the wise ones, we have journeys to make, gifts to offer, and hope in our hearts. Here, in the stillness of a winter's night, we gather to share the light of Christ, a light that shines in the nightfall. We
when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was confused and wondered what kind of greed this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look! You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David's father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. like and your face 
favorite pillow and you might have a special blanket or maybe special noise going. Can you feel that? Can you feel what it feels like? Does it feel good? Warm and snuggly, it feels really good. So I want you to think about that as I'm telling the story. Today the story is called Room for a Little One, okay? And if you can't see the pictures too good, feel free to come a little closer. It was a cold winter's night. Kind ox lay in the stable close to the side of the inn. Old dog came by. He stopped and looked into the stable. I need somewhere to rest, said old dog. Come inside, kind ox said. There's always room for a little one here. So old dog came in and lay down in the straw. He nestled close to kind ox, sharing the warmth of the stable. Stray cat peered in. She saw old dog and she stopped. Stray cat arched her back and her fur bristled. I'll not chase you, said old dog. Come inside, said Kind Ox. There's always room for a little one here. So can you see the cat? So Stray Cat came into the stable. She curled up in the straw, close to the friends she had found, purring and twitching her tail. Small Mouse stopped at the door of the stable. Uh-oh, she saw a Stray Cat and she quivered with fear. You're safe here. I won't harm you, said Stray Cat. Come inside, Kind Ox said. There's always room for a little one here. Small Mouse scurried in. She nestled down warm in the straw in the peace of the stable. Then Tired Donkey came. Joseph led him along. Mary rode on Tired Donkey's back. Joseph was cold and Mary was weary, but there was no room in the inn. Where will my baby be born, Mary asked. Come inside, kind ox said to tired donkey. There's always room for a little one here. So tired donkey brought Mary into the stable. Joseph made her a warm bed in the straw to save her from the cold of the night. And so Jesus was born with the animals around him, kind ox, old dog, stray cat, small mouse, and tired donkey, all welcomed him into the warmth of the stable. That cold winter's night, beneath the star's light, a little one came for the world. And just like there's always was room in that stable for everyone, God always has room for us. Here at Pilgrim, we welcome everyone in, and God welcomes you no matter how tall you are, how short you are, what color your hair is, you wear glasses, you don't wear glasses. God welcomes us all. And today I'd like to, while we're singing away in the major, I'd like it if we would line up and I'd like to do a little blessing, if you're okay if I touch your shoulder or your hand. And I'd like to do a little blessing for each of you to show how we here at Pilgrim and God's love, we want to carry that out through the year.
shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone all around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find the newborn Jesus wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what the Lord, what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. present in the stable where Jesus was born. 
We didn't get to hear his first cry, which is music to every parent's ear. We didn't get to see his first smile. And yet Christmas makes us smile, sing, and shout for joy. Hopefully there are many things in our lives that bring us joy, but Christmas joy is wonderfully unique. Many of the things that bring me joy feel rather individual and specific to me. My family, my friends, doing something that I really enjoy. But Christmas joy is both personal and universal. The source is God's love, which is everlasting, unconditionally given to all of creation, and brought to life in the personal relationship that God invites each of us into. Our individual joy is enriched by being in community with all of God's creation. Christmas joy is dynamic and energizing. Of course, one should always make time for contemplation and reflection, especially during this time of year when we can get caught up in the busyness of celebration and forget to take time out to rest and restore. But there's something about the depth and intensity of the meaning and promises of Christmas that stirs up excitement in us that's hard to explain or contain. Most things that bring us joy are tangible and are rational, and in many cases our joy is a response to something that has already happened. The joy of Christmas is certainly firmly rooted in factual historical events, but also in the mystery of our faith, which has shown us time and time again that God is faithful to God's promises and God's abilities are not limited by our human imagination. Said another way, we serve a God of limitless possibilities and while the seemingly impossible might take a little while, the joy of anticipation gives us the energy to keep on keeping on until our hopes and God's hopes for the world are realized. But perhaps the best part of Christmas joy is that it's not limited to just Christmas Day or even the season of Christmas. It's available to us each and every day. Unlike many of the gifts that we'll be opening tomorrow morning, God's gift will never get used up and will never expire. We may have our ups and downs, and the news of the world may seem overwhelmingly challenging at times, but as the prophet Jeremiah reminds us, God is unchanging, and the dawning of every new day could be seen as a symbol of God's light breaking through the darkness. Every morning demonstrates God's grace, a new beginning, fresh possibilities. We don't have to look any further than the breath in our lungs and the sun that shines upon us or the rain that falls to nourish the soil. The mercies of God continue to be made manifest in a multitude of ways. In Jesus Christ, we have the fullest expression of God's mercy and compassion. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let us rejoice in Christmas today and every day, and let us spread the joy of Christmas far and wide, for this is one gift that gets better each time we share.
before I offer a pastoral prayer, I would just like to point out that these prayers come from you, the congregation. Gloria told me that all through the Advent, people have been writing notes about what was said, or the prayers in church. And she, so she shared some of those with me. So please join me in an attitude of prayer. God, we thank you so much for the gift of your son and the joy that he brings. Gratitude for family and the joy of gathering for the holiday. Joy that I might experience joy and spread joy. That I might focus on joyful life and not dwell on the negative aspects of life. Grateful for the joy of the winter solstice and its promise of longer days. Grateful for the joy of friendship that shares in joy and sorrows and surrounds with love. Grateful for the traditions of the holiday season that helps me appreciate a totally senseless story. Prayer acknowledging joy. God's faithfulness in answering prayer in health issues and bonding opportunities. Prayer to be a source of joy to others. And the joy of being gone from your church family for many months and the joy of returning and all the lovely hugs that you receive. And I will be available for more afterwards as well. God, we are so grateful for your son's presence in our lives, for your presence in our lives. And we just ask you to continue to be with us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we have lifted up our prayers for your love to be shown abundantly to each and every heart. Jesus, whose love for the world was so great, you were prepared to die for it. We thank you for your sacrificial mission, which we remember this night. Lord, we have lifted up our prayers for your joy to resound through each and every soul. Jesus, who brings joy where there is sorrow and happiness where there is despair, we thank you for your great mission of joy, which we particularly remember this night. And now the hour has come and the season is fulfilled. We light the Christ candle, the light of the world, the light of possibility. We light this candle as a reminder of the light Jesus brings, a light that can never be put out. Help us to be your agents of light in the world, not just at Christmas, but all year round. Amen.
and now we will show how God's light goes out in the world.
to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. Thank you. 